The sea was calm, unnervingly so, as the midnight rose sailed towards the crumbling silhouette of Castaway Isle. The island had a reputation for being a place of ill omen, its rocky shores and twisted leafless trees looming like skeletal fingers against the setting sun. The crew moved with hushed efficiency, casting wary glances at the darkening sky, but Captain Asher Blackwell, a man known for his iron resolve, seemed unperturbed. He stood at the bow, his piercing blue eyes fixed on the distant shoreline. The island held a secret, one whispered of in dark taverns and shadowed corners, the lost treasure of Lord Beaumont. It was said the old lord had hidden his wealth there before his untimely demise, and countless souls had sought it. None returned. But it wasn't the treasure that stirred a sinister curiosity in Captain Blackwell. It was the tale of Beaumont's daughter, Eleanor, who had vanished on the night of her wedding, taken by the sea in her bridal gown, her veil trailing like ghostly sea foam on the waves. Some said she was murdered by a jealous lover, others that she had drowned herself in despair. But all agreed on one thing, her spirit still roamed the island, her mournful wails carried by the wind on moonlit nights. We're almost there, Captain, the first mate, a lanky man with a nervous twitch named Merrick muttered, breaking the captain's reverie. But are you sure about this? The men are afraid of ghost stories, Blackwell interrupted, his voice edged with mockery. We're here for gold, Merrick, not fairy tales. Merrick swallowed hard, glancing at the darkening sky. It's just, there's something wrong about this place. I can feel it. Then stay aboard if you're scared, Blackwell snapped, turning away. I'm taking a party ashore to search the ruins. The rest of you stay with the ship. As the longboat was lowered, the crew whispered amongst themselves, eyes darting nervously to the island where shadows seemed to twist and coil like living things. Blackwell, Merrick, and three other men rowed towards the shore, the only sound, the rhythmic splash of oars cutting through the water. The beach was a stretch of coarse gray sand littered with the shattered remains of old ships. Their hulls, splintered and decayed, jutted from the ground like the bones of some long-dead leviathan. As they pulled the boat onto the shore, a thick, unnatural fog began to roll in, shrouding the island in a ghostly veil. Stay close, Blackwell ordered, drawing his pistol. The air was thick with the scent of brine and decay, and the oppressive silence was broken only by the distant, mournful cry of a seabird. The group moved inland, towards the heart of the island, where the ruins of Lord Beaumont's estate lay hidden among the twisted trees. The once grand mansion was now a shattered husk, its walls crumbling, ivy creeping through broken windows. The air grew colder as they approached, the fog thickening around them. There's nothing here but death, one of the men muttered, his voice shaking. We should turn back. Quiet, Blackwell hissed, though he couldn't shake the uneasy feeling gnawing at him. There was something in the air, a sense of watching, waiting. He pushed on his boots crunching on the gravel path that led to what remained of the mansion's entrance. As they stepped through the shattered doorway, the fog seemed to press in on them, the temperature dropping sharply. The main hall was a ruin, the once ornate chandeliers hanging like broken claws from the ceiling. A grand staircase, its balustrade rotted and splintered, led to the upper floors, and beyond it, through a pair of half-open doors, the faint glimmer of moonlight shone on still water. The fountain, Blackwell murmured, striding forward. It was just as the legends described, a marble basin in the center of the overgrown courtyard, the water dark and stagnant. He approached, peering into its depths. Do you see it, Merrick? He asked, a strange excitement in his voice. 
the ring? There, at the bottom of the murky water, something glittered, a golden ring set with a large, flawless diamond. Blackwell's heart pounded. Eleanor's wedding ring lost when she vanished. Proof, perhaps, that the treasure was real. Help me get it, he ordered, turning to the men. But Merrick and the others were staring past him, their faces pale. Captain, Merrick stammered, his voice barely a whisper. Look! Blackwell turned slowly. The fog had thickened, swirling like smoke, and from its depths a figure emerged. A woman, tall and slender, clad in a tattered bridal gown, her veil trailing on the ground like a shroud. Her skin was pale as moonlight, her hair a dark, wet tangle. But it was her eyes, empty, hollow, and filled with a sorrow so profound it seemed to chill the very air that froze the blood in his veins. Eleanor, he breathed, unable to look away. The bride took a step closer, her movements slow and fluid, as if she were gliding rather than walking. Her gaze was fixed on Blackwell, and as she approached, he felt a pull, a compulsion to step towards her, to reach out. She's here for us! One of the men screamed, turning to run, but his feet seemed rooted to the ground. The others stumbled back, their faces masks of terror. Who seeks the treasure of the damned? Eleanor's voice echoed, a sound like the wind sighing through a graveyard. Who dares disturb my rest? We, we mean no harm, Blackwell managed to choke out, though his heart was hammering in his chest. We only seek gold, she whispered, and her lips twisted into a sad, mocking smile. Always gold. Greed brought you here, as it brought others before. She raised her hand, and the fog swirled around the men like tendrils of mist, wrapping around their limbs, pulling them closer. You will join them, she whispered. You will join the others who sought to take what was never theirs. The men screamed as the fog tightened around them, dragging them towards the dark waters of the fountain. Blackwell fought, struggling against the invisible force that gripped him, but it was like trying to wrestle the sea itself. Please, he shouted, desperation clawing at his throat. We'll leave, we'll... It is too late, Eleanor murmured. Her eyes, dark and endless, bore into his. Too late for all of you. The water in the fountain began to churn, the surface breaking as pale, bloated hands reached up, grasping at the air. Faces, twisted and grotesque, broke the surface. Sailors, adventurers, all who had come before. Their mouths opened in silent, anguished screams as they reached for the living, their dead eyes filled with hunger. No! Merrick wailed, trying to pull free, but the dead hands caught him, dragging him down. His screams echoed through the night as he was pulled under, the water closing over his head. One by one, the crew were dragged into the fountain, their struggles growing weaker until only Blackwell remained. The captain fought with all his strength, his vision blurring as the cold seeped into his bones. Why? He gasped, his voice breaking. Why do you do this? Eleanor's expression softened, and for a moment, he thought he saw something human in her eyes. Pain, loss, and unending sorrow. Because I cannot leave, she whispered, and so neither can they. The water surged up around him, the dead hands pulling him down. Blackwell felt the cold envelop him, his lungs burning as he was dragged beneath the surface. His vision darkened, and the last thing he saw was Eleanor's face, pale and beautiful, framed by the swirling fog. The next morning, the Midnight Rose was found adrift off the coast of Castaway Isle, its sails torn and flapping in the wind. The crew was gone, vanished without a trace. Only Captain Blackwell remained, his body lying on the deck, his eyes wide open and staring at the sky, his hand clutching something tightly. 
It was a golden ring set with a large diamond, its surface etched with salt water and age. And on the island, the fog drifted lazily over the ruins, where the figure of a bride moved silently among the shadows, her eyes forever watching, forever waiting for the next souls to come seeking the treasure of the drowned.